we've looked at SwiftUI's buttons previously, but they're hugely flexible and can adapt to a range of use cases. Now your most basic button is very simple. You want a title text, then some function to run when it's pressed. So you might say, for example, there's a button here saying delete selection and the code will run when that's tapped. It's simply print now deleting like so. Now, of course, this is just a trade enclosure right now with the print statement in there. We can actually make that any kind of function. For example, if I took out print now deleting to so my clipboard, I'll, I'll just press command X. Then here, make a new method called execute delete and paste on in there. I can now tell the button to call that. I'll just remove this whole trade enclosure here and say the action is execute delete like so. And it'd be exactly the same way. Now there are a range of ways we can customize the way these buttons look on the screen. We could say, for example, oh, hello dogs. We could say, for example, that the, this uh, a button is destructive. It's de deleting things. We can mark it as being destructive and iOS will style it differently and also potentially affect the way it's read out using voiceover. I can say here, for example, the role this button is dot destructive. It's a dangerous button and boom, you'll see it goes red in the screen straight away. And potentially it's red different again to voiceover and similar. Second, hold up, hungry mutts, you get fed all the time. Second, we could use one of the built-in styles made available to us in iOS that come built into the system. For example, rather than doing this, I'm gonna say, uh, there's a whole V-stack here of buttons. I'll do the first one, we'll do button one with no action code inside, that's fine. But this first button has a button style of bordered. See now it's blue text and a light gray background but it'll adapt automatically on the platform and appearance, light or dark mode. Then we'll do a button two below that. I'll say you are button two and your same bordered style, but your role is now destructive. And again, red text, gray background, so it's clearer this thing's dangerous. I will copy these two and paste them below to have button three and four. And these two, I'll say have a different button style again. These are bordered, prominent, and again, you get a nice blue background now, and bordered, prominent, destructive. You get a nice red background now. So it's giving us built-in system standard styling for these buttons, depending on what they mean and how important they are. You're hungry dogs. Yes, you are. If you want to customize the colors, you can do. You can see there's a nice blue color right now, but I might say, actually, this one, this one should have a tint of, let's do, indigo, for example, different styling like that. But be careful, this border prominent style looks great on the screen, but Apple recommends using too many of them. When everything's prominent, nothing is. If you want something completely custom, you can do that too. So you might say the button here, and when it's pressed, I'll do button was tapped, and then provide a second trail enclosure called label. And this one will have the text of tap me like so with some padding around it then a foreground style of white and then a background color of red so a completely custom button styling if you want to go further swift ui has a dedicated image type to render pictures in your apps and there are three main ways you can make these things firstly you can say simply image something like singapore for example as a picture already in my asset catalog, Singapore, it loads that one in and it's rendering it on the screen. That works really great for pictures that are custom to your project. If this project, if this uh, picture, sorry, doesn't matter that much, if it's just there for decoration, dog fur, thank you, uh, then you can say it's actually a decorative image and it will look the same. But now voiceover, the iOS screen reader, won't read out Singapore image when it goes over it. This is just there for decoration. The third option is to say image system name. There's a load one of the pictures from Apple's built-in SF symbols catalog of icons. And there are thousands of built-in icons for all platforms at multiple font weights or scalable. It's really, really flexible. There's a whole app actually called SF symbols. We can just go ahead and find things from here like pencil or pencil circle. Grab that one, copy name, 
go into your app and just paste on in there, you'll get the icon. It's really small as you can see, by zooming you'll see it, there we go. Boom, uh, these things are all scalable, all colorable. You can just say, you know, I want a foreground style of red and a font of, let's do a large title, and it gets bigger and red, very flexible. Be careful, by default, the screen reader will read out the name of your image when it comes to that picture. We had Singapore, it will say image, Singapore, for example. Make sure you'll have sensible names for your pictures or use image decorative so the screen reader ignores them. Now, because the longer form of buttons can have any kind of label inside them, this thing uh, back here, we could use pictures right inside here. We could say image system name of pencil dot circle, for example, and it'll load it in there. But if you want both text and picture at the same time, you have two options. The first is to put them directly inside the button initializer here. We could say, let's do edit the title and then system image of pencil. And now we can delete the whole label closure and get a title and the image side by side. But if you want something custom, back your label closure again in here, you could do, I want a H stack of the image and the text of edit, could do that. But SwiftUI has a built-in view just for this called label. We can say label edit system image of pencil and get more or less the same result as a H stack or as put it into the button directly. Of course, making a separate label means I can now style it, I could say, you know, back to adding padding again, custom foreground, start of white, background red, just like before, get custom styling for your label. It's very similar to the HTAC, this label thing, but using label is better, because SwiftUI is really smart here. It'll automatically decide when your code runs, whether it should show the icon, pencil, the text edit, or both together, depending on how they're used. For example, navigation bar buttons often just have the icon. So it'll adapt automatically. It makes it a really great choice.